In this video, I'm going to show you how to shoot an ILS approach in the DCS F16C. I'll show you how to find the information you need to shoot the approach, how to set up the aircraft properly, how to use the command steering function to intercept the localizer and glide slope, and a little bit of on the profile that you need to fly and speeds and all everything like that. So let's get started with finding out the information you need. Um, in the game, I'm going to go to the F10 map. Just to kind of give you a little situational awareness, I am to the left of the runway center line, about, I don't know, it looks like about 15 miles out. And we see 107 X rays, the TACAN. Runway 28 has an ILS, the frequency is 109.7. And the other thing we need is the runway heading in magnetic. Now, the DCS mission editor in the F10 map will give this to you in true, so you have to do a little map to get it to magnetic. Um, by the way, the uh, Caucasus map, you have kneeboard plates that will give it to you in magnetic, but if we're simply using the F10 map, we're going to have to do a little math. So, not hard, but I'm just going to use the ruler, run this down the runway, and it looks like the runway is 291 true, 291 degrees true. And so in Syria, the magnetic deviation is about five degrees east. We say east is least, so I'm gonna subtract five degrees from that 291, and I'm gonna get um, 286 magnetic, and that's what we're gonna put in the aircraft. So first thing I wanna do, I'm come down here and make sure my tack in, volume and ILS are on. Going to this uh, M key till we get PLS TACAN and I believe PLS stands for precision landing system which is it just basically means ILS instrument landing system and then the TACAN function is simply going to give us some distance measuring output right there which is useful for situational awareness I'm going to push the T ILS button I'm going to go ahead and put in the frequency you can do this shorthanded 1097 1097 enter and that's automatically going to put that into the ILS frequency it's going to turn on command steering and then we need to set the course so we can actually just do that down here it'll transfer up so we said 286 magnetic is our inbound course to the runway so I set 286 right there and what else tack in we need to come over here oops dive her down to channel. And by the way, if you need to switch between X-ray and Yankee, you just enter in zero and hit enter. Took me a while to figure that out. But I want 107 X-ray. Okay, and you see it's recognized it here. And I'm going to dauber right until I see tack in, transmit, receive. And now I have distance down here, 15.9 miles. Cool. Alright, so I think the aircraft is all set up. I'm at about 1,800 feet. And the command steering function is this little donut guy right here. And what that's going to do, see it's, it's commanding a right turn. It's going to stay on the horizon line, so it's going to keep us level until we intercept that glide slope. So we're at 1,800 feet, um, which is a typical glide slope or a typical altitude that you might intercept the glide slope. It could be higher, but roughly 1,800 above ground level is where you're going to intercept the glide slope. So we're just going to stay at 1,800 feet for this example. Once I take this off active pause and I start following the command steering, it's going to command a 45 degree intercept. So if you note down here, this, uh, this arrow right here is, is basically the, um, the course pointer is the runway heading. And then a 45 degree intercept is going to turn me right until the top of this HSI bar right here is um, basically equal to my heading. So I'll show you how that works. Let's get started. Coming right. And approach speeds, uh, you want to be between 200 and 250 knots in this portion. And then we'll slow to 11 degrees angle of attack with the gear down before we intercept the glide slope. So right now I've intercepted the um, command steering donut. And I'm going to pause again real quick and just show you that that is a 45 degree intercept. And someone told me a long time ago that the top of this line here on your HSI, if you just center that top of that line with your heading, 
that's going to give you a 45 degree intercept. Um, and then if you're flying this manually, which we're not going to do, you can actually, when that line starts coming in, just turn left and follow that line until it centers up with your heading. Works like a champ. All right, so unpause. I'm on a 45 degree intercept course. See the command steering is now turned left, so I'm gonna bank 30 degrees. It likes a good steep bank to get a good intercept. And I'm just doing my best here to follow this command steering line. And you'll note that the uh, localizer line is centering up and the command steering is now kind of commanding me to shallow out my turn. All right, so I have now intercepted the localizer and I'm flying down the final approach course. 1800 feet, I'm gonna go ahead and put my gear down at this point, but I'm not gonna extend the speed brakes. All right, the gear is down. And I'm just gonna stay on that command steering donut with my flight path marker. I'm gonna start working the throttle back and slowing down a little bit to get that 11 degrees AOA that I want. Go ahead and let the airfield know we're coming via the F10 menu. Oops. Sorry, the radio menu. So sticking with this donut, getting my speed back, getting on AOA. Once I get to 10 degrees AOA, I'm gonna bump the nose trim up slightly. And that's gonna let me maintain that 11 degrees AOA that I want, which is the top of the AOA bracket. And I'm just adjusting power and everything to kind of get this all lined up and stay level. All right, so you see the glide slope's coming down now. You'll note that it's we're intercepting it from below. Just put pause on for a second. And the glide slope's beginning to move. Once that glide slope gets about halfway down, you'll see a little tick, a uh, little line come off of that donut, and the donut's going to drop, which is telling me that I need to pitch down to maintain glide slope because I've intercepted it. All right, we're going to pause off and continue. So once that little tick mark appears and it drops down, I'm going to extend the speed brakes at this point. And I'm going to leave the throttle about where it is. You'll note that the speed brakes are out and the plane's pitching down naturally on its own. So I've added some drag and now it wants to kind of descend. And this actually just kind of helps everything line up. The throttle, if, you're, if you have the power set level at 11 degrees AOA and you just throw the speed brakes out, it's going to pitch down about 3 degrees on its own, which is right where you want to be coming down the glide slope. All right, so I'm just keeping that donut centered up in my flight path marker. I got the aircraft trimmed out for 11 degrees AOA, so I'm not having to jockey the stick too much to maintain that. The dash line there is the two and a half degree pitch ladder and a three degree descent is gonna be just below that. So right here, we're all lined up. Altitude's dropping. It feels roughly at sea level, so I don't have an approach plate for this field, but if there's no obstacles normally, a uh, minimums would be about 200 AGL. So again, just keeping that little donut centered. You can see that my um, glide slope is good. We're about three degrees. Everything's centered up. And on an instrument approach, you're going to want to try to maintain this pretty much all the way down to the ground. We see we got the runway lights in sight now. We got the rabbit. It's getting more sensitive as I get close. I'm having to make just very fine adjustments. And now I've kind of transitioned into visual mode here. I'm going to start slowing my descent a little, working the power back. Power's all the way off. And doing a little air braking. And the nose is coming. 
coming down on its own. Speed brakes all the way out, nose wheel steering's on, and wheel brakes are on. All right, thanks a lot for watching. I hope that was helpful and fun. Make sure to get that true versus magnetic heading stuff sorted out. The jet needs magnetic. Um, on the F10 map in Mission Planner, you're gonna get true. So in the Caucasus map, you can subtract seven degrees from the true headings to get your magnetic. And in Syria, you wanna subtract about five degrees. One other thing to keep in mind uh, when you're using the command steering function for that intercept, Make sure you blow 250 knots and you use a solid 30 degree turn uh, once it commands you to start turning to intercept the localizer. Uh, if you don't do that, it'll blow you right through it. it. It doesn't like you if you're too fast or if you don't turn fast enough. Alright, thanks again for watching.